Hey everybody, it is Anna J. Wilner with the Author Library, and today I am pleased to have with me VK Trichler. Uh, VK, would you like to uh, introduce yourself? Hey Anna, lovely to meet you today. Um, so I am an author who's based in South Australia. Uh, I'm originally from New Zealand with Canadian family. And uh, I've been writing for a few years now. I write pre predominantly in romance and different troops within romance. Uh, and my latest one is a bit like yours. It's a paranormal romance. Brilliant. I, I love it. Um, uh, it's uh, such an honor to, to talk with you. VK is the author of uh, the Risky Business of Romance and uh, Magic and Mischief, uh, the Nowhere Pack series. Y you have, um, I mean, you know how to write strong, uh, independent women in the main lead, and I absolutely love that. And the, there's a little bit of magic in uh, a lot of your books. Um, is that magic and romance? <laughs> I think the two kind of go hand in hand, maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, if look, we're lucky. Be, I know, right? I, I'm I'm lucky in that I have the ability um, to play within the romance field, so I'm not tied into a specific um, genre within romance. But you're right; I love a, a strong female lead. Um, of all the books I I read growing up, you know the traditional strong female lead came through in a lot of them and I think I've learned from that that you know there's a great strength in a book through that genre um and romance is is such a beautiful flexible beast um because you can move it in different worlds you can put it in different locations you can uh, add new events to it and the outcome is based upon that relationship between one person and another, which is, um, I guess, fundamentally what we are as humans is how we relate to each other. So it's it's uh, it's one of my favorite genres to write in. I love to, to put two really um, different characters together and see how they work and what works and what doesn't work with them and, and sort of unpeel the onion to find the center, so. Oh, I love that, I've, I've never, thought of it that way but yeah I mean really um with romance you have so many different options where you can go with it and uh from, from the way that you just talked um I can tell are you a pantser or a plotter <laughs> I'm a pantser look I, I'll be know. honest <laughs> I try plotting I really do like I, you know, I'm, I'm in the middle of a, a, a three book series. I'm into book two and I had kind of plotted out book two. And then when I started writing it, the characters took over. So it's not really what I plotted out. So now I'm thinking book three, okay, I'm going to have to move it a little bit because the goalposts have changed. So, you know, and I really want to be a good plotter, but I'm just, I'm, I'm not that person. <laughs> I, I, did uh, the same thing, um, you know, when, whenever you're you're uh, writing a series like the Nowhere Pack series, which we'll talk about here in just a second, you know, you kind of have to um, remember the rules that you've already set forth in the first book and the second book. And so I did try plotting, um, but it was an utter catastrophe because your characters really do just sometimes they they're off on their own thing yeah they, they really don't <laughs> i know right it's, it's like herding cats you know you try and get them into a pen and then one escapes and that's all over so yeah. yeah sometimes they can be frustrating and sometimes um they can really surprise you and take you places that you didn't know and that's 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 the fun part about being a pantser absolutely yeah I love it when you're writing something and then you're like oh oh that's why that happened oh yeah I didn't realize that and you're writing it so <laughs> there's a beauty in that <laughs> I know I I always hate getting that question where people are like you know uh, how did you decide that this was and I'm like I'm gonna sound like a crazy person 
I didn't decide that. My characters did. Yeah, I know, right? So, you know, you can totally, totally relate. I can totally relate to that. Yeah. My characters talk a lot as well. <laughs> so. uh, there's, there's also, there's a lot of hope that's woven into these books um, that that comes along with uh, with with romance. Are you a fan of the happily ever after? Is that like a, is that a requirement for you as as an author? Or it's not a requirement. So like I, the very first book that I wrote is uh, Secret Life of Sarah Maids. Now I've I've copped a lot of flack for that one for the ending because I didn't actually give her a happily ever after as such. I did in the in the fact that she found herself and she created her her own um, world and she was happy when we when we leave her in the book she's happy, but I didn't attach her to a man or a person. Um, I left her to to do what she wanted to do, and I have copped a lot of flack for not giving her a set happily ever after at the end of it. Um, which is interesting because I don't feel like in life we always get that. In fact, quite the opposite. But then, you know, maybe that's why people read romances because they want to get that. They want to have that resolution that they don't get in life. So I don't know. But um, I, I do know that, yeah, I try and, and make it so that when you get to the end of the book, you feel like it's been resolved, even if it's going into another book in the series or I want to have that feeling that you've had a resolution to this part. So, yeah. And just guys, just so you know, sometimes being alone is the happy ending. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> At least, you know, I tell myself. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, your most recent book is one that I absolutely have to read. I already ordered it. Hey. <laughs> I hope you enjoy called, it. <laughs> a town called Nowhere takes uh, the typical shifter dynamic and completely flips it. As in 180 degrees flips it. Uh, we go from werewolves to were panthers. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. I'm I'm but, so stoked to read it. I really am. Yeah. Look, and and the concept behind it is is a fairly straightforward one. It's a little bit of play on on life and reality, and a little bit of play on on a concept. So, um, you know, I've I've pulled in little elements of historical facts within Australia and the town in which they end up uh, creating, which is called Nowhere. Um, is, is based on a little bit of historical fact from Australia um, and a little bit of fiction. So the, the person that supposedly created the town originally, uh, he is an actual person. Uh, he did exist in Australia. He was you know, extremely wealthy. Um, the town itself does not exist. So you can't find it in a, in a map anywhere in Australia. <laughs> you couldn't, but, but it is located uh, loosely around New South Wales, the hinterland of Queensland, uh, that kind of area. Um, the the characters in it, I grabbed from, uh, they had a, a thing on TV where there was a couple of people that apparently searched Australia looking for panthers that are supposedly roaming in the hinterland. Um, I, hey, who am I to knock somebody's belief? So I thought it would be kind of fun if actually these weren't escaped zoo animals or you know mythological beings that these were actually people this was a pack that you know existed within Australia and and I started having a play with it and it became a book and then I've, I've pulled in all these other characters and and it's it's really developing into its own little world and I'm, I'm having so much fun living in this uh, pseudo Australian world uh, that I really didn't think too much about the genre side of it. I wasn't kind of wanting to make changes to the genre. I was just having fun using that idea and that concept. Um, and uh, the beauty of, of paranormal is that you can make anything happen, you know. So, uh, yeah, I'm enjoying well, I, that very much. I'm 
very excited to read it um, <laughs> because we're, we're um, yeah, uh, the first in the series, um, it, the, it's the first in the series, A Town Called Nowhere, which uh, we're introduced to, to the main characters. Uh, and then when can we expect to see a second book? You can. So I've almost finished it. Um, in fact, it'll be finished. I, I'm going away for a writing retreat in like two weeks and I'm finishing it then. Um, and then it will be off to get edited and prepared. So, so the release date's going to be around October. Um, that's what I've planned for. Um, I'm, I'm really uh, looking forward to seeing how people uh, feel about what happens in it. Because as I mentioned, I'm not much of a plotter, I'm a pantser. So I'm really interested to see uh, what people think about what's happening with the characters and what happens to the characters. Because it's, um, it, as he, even as I was writing, I was like, oh, wow, didn't see this one coming. So um, yeah, I, I, th I think that's going to be fun. Yeah. Oh, that that's awesome. So, uh, have um, do you think this is where 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 your your heart is now? Is is paranormal romance? I mean, after I do, starting, yeah. This one Look, being, I really enjoy it. It's it's fun because you don't have limitations, right? So, you know, at the end of the day, you can do with anything uh, any way you want to. You just have to explain it well enough for people to understand. So like with my magic and mischief book, um, that one, she can actually jump worlds. So she jumps between universes. And, uh, and that was really fun too, because you got to create all these new universes as she moved around uh, different places. And the second book for that one comes out in February next year. And uh, again, I'm going to be really interested to see what people think of that one, because again, it didn't go in the direction that I originally intended when I kind of thought I was going to write it out. So it's... um. But yeah, the, the beauty is there, the freedom of writing in that genre is, is fabulous. And uh, yeah, you can, you can still um, build your believable, reliable character structure, but you can put them anywhere, so. That's what I was going to say, in the same way that romance is a great vehicle for a lot of uh, different storylines and, um, and character development and character arcs. Uh, so too is fantasy and that, you know, the rules are really made by you. And uh, so there are no limitations. As okay. long as you make it, as long as you explain it to the reader in a way that is feasibly possible and makes sense, then, um, you know, there, there's, right. there's rules, except for the ones That's you right. <laughs> Yeah, your limitations are your own. So pros and cons. <laughs> each uh, each of your books uh, holds a supernatural or paranormal aspect to them. Um, is this a favorite genre for you as a reader as well? Or is that how yeah, you got look, started? I'm just curious. I am a terrible genre jumper when I read as well. Um, and look... I write based on, on what emotion I'm feeling at the time because I feel like I write better if I'm writing in that emotion, um, which is which is great, but I, I do the same when I read. So, like, I am the worst fan you could have as an author because, like, I'll read your book one once this time and then, like, five times the next time and then, like, not for two years. Like, I just, I'm all over the shop when I read. Um, but I've found uh, as I've got busier I've really enjoyed audiobooks I've found some amazing shifter romances through audiobooks that I've really enjoyed um, and some new authors obviously through that process um, and yeah it, it, I really enjoy um, reading them I get st stuck sometimes on the the detail if I'm reading it now it used to be I could just pick up a book and read it and it would be like oh yeah this is a great story and now I get stuck into the into the detail side. So I find audiobooks actually takes me out of that space a little bit, which is good. <laughs> I was know. gonna ask, as a writer of paranormal romance and paranormal uh, you know, uh, the paranormal genre in general, do you feel like you're a harsher critic 
on paranormal other paranormal books like like i would have written that differently like this doesn't make sense like i think you automatically without even meaning to kind of go into a little bit of editor mode um because when you've written it then and you've gone through and you've edited your own work multiple multiple times even when you pick up somebody else's stuff you you're still there's a little tiny part of you that goes no that needs to change i'd move that that needs to go there what's this character doing <laughs> and you're like oh be quiet i'm trying to enjoy the book like <laughs> um yeah so we we do tend to get a little bit stuck sometimes in that and it's it's no criticism of the author at all it's just the no. mindset and you have to turn that off um and but that can be hard to do. i will say that uh, that i've noticed that in myself that um i've not enjoyed um the paranormal romance uh, genre in the way that i used to after i started writing it because just once you write it then you you know um then you're kind of you know in that like you said like in in, in that critique mode so yeah. um but yeah it can be harder but you know look it's it's um if i think back on what i've, I've read as a kid i read a lot of uh classics i read a lot of like i love jane austen i've always thought it'd be kind of fun to have a bit of a play with that one but there's so many people that have done that like it's such a dumb trope um and then you know like I loved um, Charles Dickens. Wouldn't it be fun to turn a Dickens world into a vampire world? And like, there's there's all these really fun, um, I guess, gameplays that you can do with some of the traditional stuff as well. Um, but again, uh, writing it and then reading it becomes two different things, you know? Like it's, yeah, I think yep. it, you have to be able to separate the two. So how did you get started? When did you uh, first decide that uh, has reading all or writing, has it always been just a natural part of who you are as a person or um, like uh, did reading develop into writing or I mean, how, how did you decide that you wanted to be an author? Everybody's answer, everybody's story to becoming an author is different. So for me, um, I've always loved reading. I was a massive reader as a kid. Um, and I used to, you know, you go through teenage years and you write that tragic poetry and the, you know, the um, <laughs> self-deprecation of life and how terrible it is. Um, so I've got lots of that, that, that teenage poetry in my back cupboard. Um, but I don't, I didn't really get into writing stories uh, very much. And it wasn't really until when we moved to Australia, we said that we were going to pick one thing on a bucket list we'd always wanted to do, but not got around to. And mine was to write a book. So I wrote a book and then that became another book and <laughs> it became another book. And, you know, life kind of took over from there. So that's what they don't tell you is that once you write <laughs> one, like you're hooked. It's <laughs> it becomes addictive. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. So, and and uh, the, the, um, the characters, the more characters that you create, the more that you find. And then, you know, you'd be sitting in the shower and all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, I need a pen. Hold on. <laughs> oh, this life. <laughs> how, how, how do your stories come to you? Because mine are these flash to bang ideas that are in the most rant. I will be doing the dishes or vacuuming or driving to Chick-fil-A uh, or McDonald's to go get some chicken nuggets for my little one. And I'm like, that's a great idea. And then I've got, you know, <laughs> got to pull out my phone while I'm in the, 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 the you know, the, the drive-through and I'm, you know, narrating yeah, into yeah. The, the phone. Yeah, hold on, um, I'll get my gun, I'll be two yeah. seconds, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> on a what? No, 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 no. I, I, I was talking about something entirely different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, I, and it's really weird because um, I love as well my my a very good friend of mine, Diane Hester. She's a su suspense author, and um, she came up with the coolest game. It's called Plot Poker. It's a whole bunch of like cards. Some of them are characters, some of them locations, some of them are, and you can basically, she's she's 
just got this massive pile of them and you, you pick a little bit from each pile and you put them together and then you have to write based on whatever you pick out and some of it is like oh my god how am I going to piece this together and then sometimes you just get like gold <laughs> and I love the idea of just being randomly assigned something um and I write really well on the spot so if I'm just throwing something i that that's where my brain just goes yay and jumps in and then just starts building stuff um so yeah for me the more random the better but I do I I get the weirdest places you know you be in the supermarket and you're looking for something then you're like oh my god oh how did I not think of this before and then you're diving around your handbag and your kids are like oh god can we just go please like <laughs> you know hold on I'll just be two minutes two minutes yeah I feel oh, like okay. that's my life telling people two minutes <laughs> that's <laughs> but, really yeah. cool that's a really cool idea though and uh you I, you and I are so similar it's like freaky <laughs> um but yes if I'm given something like on the spot random it's just like I don't know why but my brain kicks into this like hyper you know, uh, craze, uh, creativity drive. And yeah. I will end up just spewing things until something pops out that makes sense. And then it connects with another thing. And I think, um, I think the technical term for that is, um, insane. No, it's, uh, un <laughs> it's uh, a little bit of insanity in all of us. <laughs> absolutely. And right, absolutely. Um, but uh, a little bit of neurodivergency th that I have that that actually helps with the wild creativity. So, yes, yeah, absolutely. And um, uh, yeah, thank goodness I have it because it makes life a lot easier. Like <laughs> the amount of times you get thrown into stuff, and you're like, oh, I'll just let the brain take over. It do it'll do its thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah <laughs> well uh in the no word pack series how many do you know how many books you want i mean ideally uh do you have a kind of it's, an idea it's based it's it's based around a three book uh concept um so book one we really get introduced and the pack gets formed uh book two we have a lot of uh I guess interactions between other packs and competition and and then book three is the big finale so um yeah and and uh and i i am going to to do something a little bit different in book three so hopefully it, it pulls off <laughs> I'll, I'll let you know after i finish writing it um but i i do have a concept around book three that i want to pull in um some threads from from overseas and stuff as well so um yeah so it's it's uh yeah it's theoretically a three book one the difficulty i'm going to have is there's all these uh subplots within it now because i've got so many characters that have been developed along the way and some of them i love some of them i love to loathe um but the you know like the the they all have their own stories so whether you then bring in some of the other stories into it i'm not sure yet but um uh, I'm really enjoying the the new pack. So that's the great thing about writing really intriguing secondary and even tertiary characters is that sometimes there is a spinoff potential uh, or a, uh, a, a another book uh, kind of compendium uh, a companion book uh, to to go along with the series from that character's point of view because. If um, if you write some of those secondary characters become a lot more important than you originally intended for them to be. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And it and it's um, for me, it's really not weird, but I guess surprising when you get messages from readers that have um, attached themselves to a character that you don't really remember writing <laughs> like you, you, you know, they're in the book and, you know, like you've got an idea of who they are in, in the but like you don't remember a lot about them and then there you get these readers that email you and like oh my god I love this character it's my favorite character I'm like wait what who <laughs> oh yeah that one yeah oh yeah okay <laughs> so yeah it's um 
yeah, I, I do find that um, sometimes you have um, unintentional characters that become beloved as well. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to ask you the hard one. Um, do you have a favorite character? Who do I have favorite? a favorite character? I know. It's different. See, the thing is, is that it's different. Your favorite character to write may not be uh, everyone's favorite character to read. Exactly. And I do think, and you know, feel free to argue with me on this one, but I think when you, um, when you have a world with lots of different characters in it as well, you uh, affiliate with a different character based on where you are in your own life as well. So you can pick up a book at different stages in your life and you'll affiliate with different characters within that. So you'll have uh, different character favorites based on the closest match to where you are in your own lifespan. So, you know, if I look at my own book, um, Gloria is like one of the older motherly ones. She would be closer to where I am in my stage in life. So I love her as a character because she's a great character. But that's, again, my affiliation to her in my own life stage, as opposed to as an individual character. So my, my, two, um, my two main characters, Nikki and Drew in this book are fabulous because they're both so infinitely flawed. And um, I love the fact that they're both broken in their own way. <laughs> and, uh, and I love being able to uh, give the reader the experience of seeing them try to heal themselves and fix themselves and, and get through that process. So um, yeah, and particularly in, in book two, you, you see a lot of development from Drew coming through. Um, so hopefully the, the characters can, can understand that pathway for him. And then, um, yeah, I, as you know, like I have, I have lots of uh, characters that I've really um, identified with. And I, I have one character, um, and, and don't tell anyone, but I have to kill him off shortly. And I feel really bad about it. <laughs> so, yeah. I know. I know. People, I, 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 I'm not giving, can't give anything away. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's so hard whenever, whenever you know that someone's about to get it. And then you see this fandom around that character and you're like, already, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Y'all. Yeah. I know, right? Yeah. They're going to be so mad I, at me. I don't know that it's kind of, yeah, some people are going to get really upset about it, but it it's good development and um, it makes sense. So, yeah. But no, I completely agree with you um, on that. And I think that's why a lot of readers, <clears throat> a good book, I think, um, and you can argue with me on this, um, but I think a good book, book has a mix of five star four star even three star and two star reviews if you see a book that has all five star reviews they paid somebody those are, that's all fr that's friends that are writing yeah. those reviews. um if, if uh, a, a really good book some people are really going to hate the characters based on their own personal preferences and their own personal personal mindsets and some yeah. people are really going to love the book and the characters based on their own personal mindsets and their own personal character. Um, yeah. And that's how you and know when you've got a great book. Yeah, yeah. And, and look, you know, we can't write to please everybody all of the time. It's right. impossible. Um, but, you know, it, to to... The way I look at it is if you have somebody that really hates your book and somebody really loves your book, you are still getting an emotional response. So there's something, there's a magic in that. Yes, there is, because you have struck a chord in some way, shape, form, or fashion that uh, really resonated with someone. Um, and that is at, that is a memorable book. Right. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Well, VK, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I have had an absolute blast talking with you. I feel like we're long lost cousins or something. And um, quite plausible. <laughs> hey, it, 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 you, Who knows? You, you never know. Um, 
<laughs> but uh, but thank you so much for coming on the show, guys. Check out the links in the comment section below. Uh, I have uh, VK's um, Amazon page uh, on their, her author page so that you can definitely check out all of the books uh, that she has available, but uh, definitely uh, A Town Called Nowhere, which is out now, uh, the first in the pack series, uh, Lost Packs, uh, that's what I have, the Nowhere Pack series. <laughs> and uh, if you haven't already, Go ahead and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on more great uh, people and uh, content uh, and guests. And everyone stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you again, VK. No worries. Thanks. See you.